Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Max, and in this video, we want to talk about what to do after everything has been installed and configured on your LAMP server. So, with the current scenario, what's happening is everything has been installed, everything has been configured, you have your WordPress site up and running, and you have that installed and configured as well. So, what's one thing what's one of the things that we're going to do well first of all let's go ahead and go to our server this is our test server and so let's do a list of that directory we are in currently in the var forward slash www and this is where your wordpress website is first thing that we want to do is we want to look at the permissions and so let's go ahead and do that with the LS space minus L you see the L or LL either or that will show you the, the permissions and then press enter on your keyboard all right now for HTML we currently have the owner as root and then the group as a root and then for your WordPress website which is what we're interested in you have a, a, a user of nobody and a group of nobody so what we want to do is make sure that the people um, that for your website for your WordPress website you have the proper permissions or you're gonna run into a lot of errors so here's what we're going to do i want to go ahead and have you look at the um the password the password file and i'll show you why in just a minute okay we're going to cat that out this is the password this is where all of the users um are kept in in this file right here and so we press enter okay so we can go ahead and see down here we got a bunch of users okay we have we have a user for MySQL database or uh, Maria DB database and then we have a user for me I am one of the users okay and to see the user that um, that runs the your Apache web server let's see if we can find him real quick he's going to be the user with the least elevated permissions let's see if we can find him. here it is right here this is the user that we're interested in is www dash data okay this is the uh, user that Apache normally uses for serving and um, re for requesting and serving data. Okay. And the reason why we're interested in this is this is the user that we want to own our WordPress uh, directory. Okay. So let's go ahead and clear the screen here. And again, we're going to do a ls space minus l. And as we see, the person that owns this uh, this your WordPress or the WordPress site right here is nobody, and the group is nobody. So what we want to do is we want to change that to www dash data. That way, that user, which is your Apache website, your Apache server will be the one that controls this 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 site this WordPress site and the way we do that is we use the sudo power sudo space and then what we're gonna do is do change ownership space minus R for recursive and then we're gonna go ahead and put in the user that we want to take that we want to have permissions for this website let's see it's gonna okay so we want it we're gonna have to clean it up a little bit 
but we do want it to be www dash data right okay and then what we want to do is do a colon and then we want you want to use the same user and because that will be that will be the users group right just like that and then you do a and then you go ahead and use the uh, the website name which is M69 and then we'll tab it out and that's the way you want it now if you want to use the shorthand you can go ahead and take out this side and you can do it like that and that will work the same way okay that way that gives your Apache server permissions for this um, for this WordPress site all right and then you just go ahead and press enter go to the end it'll prompt you for your password or it may prompt you for your password you put in your password and press enter let's see oh I think we forgot to put in a, a, a space so let's try this again All right okay that should work and it did all right and then we'll do a ls space minus l and now we can see that the Apache server which uses this username is now has owner permissions for this website for your WordPress website and that's how you want to do it for any one of your um, your your web pages or you I'm sorry for any one of your uh, websites that you have in this directory you want them all to be to have the owner of www data because as I said this is this is the user that your Apache server uses and so trust me you just want all of your all of your websites that you put in this folder for W for var space www you want all of your websites for this to be owned by www-data.com or www-data okay and so after that everything has been configured everything is working you have everything the way you want to one of the last things that we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about doing a backup very important thing is after you get everything configured the way you want to is to go ahead and do a backup very very important so that's what we're going to do is we're going to work on doing a backup we're going to CD back to your home folder this is your home folder this is where we're going to do the backup from uh, it's kind of important to go ahead and do the backups from your whole your home folder and we're going to go over a command that we're going to use to do a backup. Uh, we're going to be using uh, a program called TAR. That's T as in Tango, A as in Apple, and R as in Romeo. The TAR command it can be used for compressing files and uncompressing files. Same thing for folders. It can uncompress folders and it can compress folders. So. What we're going to do is we're going to run over a command, a few commands real quick. There is only going to be two of them. Okay, and here they are right here. I hope this is big enough for everybody to see. Let me go ahead and make it a little larger. Okay. All right. So, let's go over these commands. Uh, whenever you're using the tar command, especially for root, you want to use sudo. Sudo gives you the root and sudo powers. All right, so we're going to type in the command sudo space tar, 
and then space and then minus this flag here which is for C is in Charlie, V is in Victor, P is in Papa, Z is in Zulu, and F as in Frank. And we'll go over these real quick. The C means to go ahead and compress this uh, tar. The V means to be vo verbose so that we can kind of see what's going on when we compress it. Uh, the P means to go ahead and keep the permissions that each uh, folder that we have when they're being backed up it'll go ahead and keep their permissions as we showed you earlier when we switched um, your your folder to the www-data user okay and then let's see here the z means to go ahead and compress it and then the file the, the f here means to go ahead it's going to be a file and we're going to give it a file name okay so what I did was I gave it this file name. You can name yours whatever you want. Um, a good practice is probably even if you know the host name, you can go ahead and put in host name dash whatever you want. As you can see right here, I got the backup and then I got the name that we're going to do the backup on. All right, and then it's going to end with dot tar dot gz. This is going to be a tar uh, gz uh, file. Okay. And then for the next command, we're going to do a space and then a hyphen hyphen exclude equals. And then we're going to exclude this because we're going to run it from the home directory. So we're going to exclude it so that it doesn't back, it, back up itself. All right. And then from here, we want to put in the username, which for me is going to be MXWIL. And so we go back here and where it says user, that's where I'm going to put in my username. Okay. And then you want to go ahead and put in the backup name that you named it. This is going to be the original name. So you, you name it. You put it here and you go ahead and put it here. This is where you put it if you want to exclude it so that it doesn't back itself up. All right, and then you do a space and then another slash slash one file system. Okay, and that's just saying which file system we want to back up. And in our case, we want to back up the whole file system which uh, starts, which, which has all of the files that we need in the root directory. Okay. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this command and we'll put it in the, uh, in the terminal and we will go ahead and run it. All right. So this is the command. We already went over the meaning of everything. So we're going to go ahead and press the enter button and it should, um, it should go ahead and compress everything in the root folder right there and make a backup. Uh, it's going to make a tar.gz backup for us. So it may take a while, but we're going to go ahead and begin and I'm going to go ahead and press the enter button. And there it goes. It's backing up all of the files in the root folder. Like I say, it may take a while, but it is very important. You want to do a backup. You always want to do a backup. You do it on a frequent basis. Um, how frequent is going to be up to you. If you do one once a day or once a week or once every other two weeks or once every month. Just make sure you do a really good backup. All right. Then after we do a backup, we're going to go ahead and go over how we can do a restore in case something happens. Uh, an old administrator told me one time, uh, you know, maybe not every system catches some type of a malware or a virus, but every system is going to fail at one point or another for one reason or another. So it is always a very good idea to do backups, okay? That way you can go ahead and have something for when your system breaks down, 
you'll be able to go ahead and restore it, hopefully in a quick and easy and efficient manner. And using the tar command, even though you have to type in a whole lot of different, um, different uh, uh, um, commands, this may look, <laughs> it's definitely long and, is, and it definitely might look scary to people, especially to people who doesn't, who don't like to use the command line. But trust me, this is very simple. I'm going to leave this information in a, um, in a PDF file format so that what you can do is you can go ahead and download it and use it for your own reference. Um, also, another thing you could probably do is you could probably make a script out of this so that you can go ahead and use it, you know, uh, type in a few commands, press enter, and it should do it in the script for you to back it up for you. So that should work like that. Hopefully this uh, backup will be done soon and we can continue on with the, with the video. I think this is going to be um, the last video in the LAMP series. Um, I think I've went over a good general knowledge of uh, how to first build and configure your LAMP server and how to maintain it and hopefully with this video learn how to back it up. So it should work for us and it should, it should give you a good knowledge. Um, everything up till now, thus far, you can use in a what what the industry may call uh, describe as a bare bones or bare metal uh, computer system. That means if you got a home server, you should be able to use this video series to create your um, your 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 lamp stack for to build a um, home server or if you want to go online and use what is known as a VPS which is an acronym that stands for virtual private network I'm sorry virtual private server okay you can use your this uh, lamp video series to go ahead and do that um, you can use any of the cloud services you can use I personally um, use uh, DigitalOcean, uh, but you can use Linode, uh, you can use AWS, you can use Azure. There are plenty of cloud services, but you having the basic knowledge from uh, using this, la this um, LAMP video series, you'll be able to configure your server on any one of those um, those technologies without a problem because it's all going to be configured the same there may be slight differences I'm sure between the different cloud services but they're slight and it shouldn't be too hard for you to figure out um, another reason or yeah another reason for the, the different types of people who could use a um, use this type of a uh, series usually it works for uh, developers who want to create their own server and uh, do their own projects that works this should work out very well for them so oh and also to let you guys know this will not be our last series in, in dealing with the different stacks I plan on doing other series about other different stacks uh, I plan on doing a series with a mean stack, plan on doing a series with a Merv stack, uh, and I plan on doing a series with, um, what's the name of that? Let's see, we got mean, we got Merv, and we got, um, hmm, uh, there's a limp stack, that's a L E M P, L is in light, E is in echo. M is in Mike and P is in Papa. That that limp stack will be done with instead of using an Apache server with a limp stack, 
you'll be using an nginx server so we'll be doing other types of stacks so that we can um, configure these different types of servers that should be of particular interest to those of us who want to be either front-end developers or back-end developers or full-stack development it helps if you learn the different stacks and how to build and configure them and I will be doing a series on that as well okay looks like we are done good so once it finishes doing its backup if we do a LS that should show us that we have a backup with our name, with our backup name, and it should be uh, compressed as a gzip file. So let me go ahead and do that and press enter. And there we go. So this is our backup. We are going to go ahead and clear the screen by pressing control on our keyboard and the letter L as in light. That is going to go ahead and clear our screen. All right, so now we have done a successful backup. And like I say, you can name yours whatever you want to. I usually name mine with the host name and then um, uh, the date so that I know which, when I did the backup. So you can name it with any variation that you want. And so then after that, before we do the restore, let's do a confirmation of a certain sort. Let's go ahead and see if we can kind of mess up our, um, our system. This is a test system, so I'm not really that scared. But what we're going to do, since, you wanna, since this is going to be a LAMP server, or my, officially is my LAMP t um, uh, test server, let's go ahead and go over to our where we host our website at and there we have it and let's see well let's see what the ls minus l okay let's go ahead and change the permissions again sudo change ownership space minus r and then we'll name it uh we can name it whatever we want. I'll just say poo bear colon space and then my 69. <laughs> let's see if it did name it that anyway. Let's see here. No, it did not. Okay, let's see. What else can we do? We just want to break it up and then we want to mess it up a little bit and then see if we can go ahead and uh, change it back to through our restore. So let's try this. We could just name it root then. Let's just name it root. Okay. That wasn't too difficult. Okay, now, so let's come in here and say there's something wrong with our website. The permissions is wrong, and every, and you get certain, certain uh, users or certain clients that are complaining that they can't access this website, they can't access any of the pages on this website, and you're having issues. So this is where you want to go ahead and do a restore okay it may be to the point to where you your 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 website is completely corrupted maybe due to what malware ransomware what have you you name it might be a, a virus or something like that having a good backup is gonna save you right so let's go back to our home directory Right. Okay, 
Now, what we're going to do from here is we're going to go ahead and do a restore. So since we already have the backup in here, we can go ahead and use that. So let's go back to our command here. And we want to go ahead to do a restore. We want to use this command right here. Let's go ahead. Before we paste it in, we'll go over the command. And so it's very similar to the top command. So we're going to go ahead and do a sudo because we need root slash sudo writes space. And then we want to use the tar command again. And then space. And then we want to use the minus. And then you want to use x to extract or uncompress the, um, the, the, the zipped file. You want to use v as in Victor to see the uncompression um, so it'll show it in verbose mode. You want to use P to, you, to keep the same permissions that you had when you did the backup. As you know, we changed it, um, or someone changed it, we'll say, for this scenario. Okay. And you want to use the Z. That's going to unzip it, and, and it's a, a zip file. A, a gzip file and F means that this is a file and we're going to give it a name okay and then this this is the complete path right here so we wanna we want to restore it from home slash user whatever your username is slash and then the name of the backup which is yada 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 tar dot gzip and then we have the minus c large c that's a capital c as in charlie that means to go ahead and change it to the working directory that has the backup or where it's going to back up to and then you have the slash slash numeric dash owner that just means it's going to restore all of the <coughs> original uh, original per, uh, permissions okay and then we're just gonna take this whole command we're gonna put it in the terminal and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one modification instead of this being username it's supposed to be my username which is MXWIL. Okay. And then now we should be good to go from here. We're just going to go to the end and we're going to press enter. And this should restore our backup. So let's go ahead and see. Okay. <clears throat> so as we can see, Per the uh, V in the switch, which stands for verbo verbose, we're seeing it do a restore and backing up everything that uh, that was in the backup itself. And like I said, depending on the size of your directory, this can take a while. So, but I can't stress enough to anybody always do backups now you may use something else you may use something called rsync you may use something from um, a company that uh, has a backup service you may use a third-party software you might use a third-party company no matter what you always want to make sure you have backups and at some point you even want to want to do a test of that backup the last thing you want to do is run into problems and the trouble with your with your system only to find out that your backup that you did last week or even the day before doesn't work. So at some point you want to do regular backups and you want to do you want to test that backup with at least one restore. You don't have to do it every day, every week, every other week, or every month, but you do want to uh, verify that the restore does work, right? 
maybe once every few months or so. I've seen people get uh, lose their jobs because <laughs> because they didn't keep good backups. So go ahead and start practicing. You, if you have a, a, an Ubuntu server, which is the main server that we've been dealing with, um, you may even want to create what is known as a cron job to uh, do a backup every every so often. Like I say, it doesn't matter whether you want to do it once a day, once a week, once every two weeks, once a month. I usually do mine once a week, once a month, something like that, whenever I have time. But, and I know I'm rambling, but you definitely want to have a good backup. Always, always, always have a good backup of some type. All right. Looks like we should be finishing up here. And after we do that, we'll just go ahead and check it, make sure that we have the original permissions before we uh, made the changes. And our backup should be good to go. I know this video is going long. Uh, it's past 31 minutes now. But uh, we should be finishing up soon. All right, excellent. Due to previous errors. So we had some errors. But I think most of the errors were superficial because they were dealing with, uh, with one of my programs dealing with Snap. And I don't, really, I don't really care about that because I didn't really use anything with Snap. So we are going to go ahead and just ignore those errors for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear the screen. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and switch over to our to our um, to our web to our WordPress website. Okay. And let's go ahead and do a list minus L. Okay. And here we go. We have been restored. Right? So we did a backup. And when we did the backup, it was set to the permissions that we wanted it to be. www-data. Then after we did the backup, we went ahead and changed it back to root, which is what it should not have been. And that was just so that we can verify that after we did a backup, we can do a good restore. And so then we did the restore, and it has restored it to the permissions that we wanted it to be uh, after we had made the changes. So this was a, su a success. Uh, the backup did work. The restore worked. And so... This was just a small demonstration of uh, using a, the tar command to back up your, your uh, server. This should work whether you're, you're dealing with a VPS, whether you're dealing with a home server, no matter what. It should work. And another thing too, what you probably gonna wanna do is once you do the backup, you're going to want to take your um, your backup and place it somewhere <clears throat> and not leave it on your server in case there's a problem with your server and uh, it gets corrupted. You're going to probably take this and put it on one of your remote systems, uh, maybe your local system. You can even put it on a USB. All right. You just want to take your backup and make sure it's safe so that no one else corrupts it. So that is it, and as I said, I'm going to leave this information in the video description with a link to this. It's going to be on my GitHub, and you can go ahead and take it and copy it and um, use the commands as you see fit, use it and modify it.
to, to your heart's content. So thank you very much. I appreciate you looking at my video. I hope you have a good day or night wherever you are. Um, that is the end of the video. Thank you and bye-bye.